Hello my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here and welcome to this spring cleaning slash decluttering series. Now don't worry, you did click on the correct channel, it's still all about thoughtful and creative sewing, but a big part of that is the space where we do it, the materials that we accumulate and also that chaos that sometimes creeps in. In this series you will see five episodes, one for each Friday in the month of March. And if you're watching this after the original release date, definitely check the description underneath this video. All of the episodes will be linked right there. All right, one thing to keep in mind, I am not a professional organizer, but when I do my spring cleaning, I like to divide it sort of like in four different stages. And stage number one is what we're doing today, which is purge. So to get started, I'm bringing a couple of supplies here and one of them is this really big box because we are gonna go through everything. And everything means fabrics, sewing books, supplies, patterns, sewing notions, everything that you see in the sewing space, we're gonna go through that. So here I have my donate box, but donate doesn't mean just, you know, put it all in one big box and drop it off at a thrift store. It also means that let's say I have a book that is in great condition that I could uh, donate to a library or maybe uh, some supplies that would really be great for my daughter's preschool or things like that. I find that if I just have one big box, everything can go in there and then later on if there are you know, multiple subcategories, I can then take some time and sort it through. But I do have a couple of little gift bags over here because I do have people in my life, dear friends, that do crafts. So not sewing, but crafts. So I do have some craft supplies that I know that I will not be using anytime soon, if at all. They're in great condition, barely used. I bought them for something, then I forgot, then life got in the way and whatnot. So I'm just gonna put those craft supplies in these gift bags and I will offer them to my friends if they wanna take them, great. If not, <laughs> big box. Then I also have a trash bag because I do have a trash can in my sewing room. I just took the trash out so I'm gonna put this new trash bag in there because unfortunately some of the things that we will go through will need to go into the trash. So I would suggest having something like this handy as well so that way you can make that decision and move on. I'm going to get started with my pegboard over here because that's what you see, that's what I see. And remember, I'm not cleaning right now, I'm not organizing, I'm not making it pretty, I'm just sorting it through. And I do this every single year. And I must say that after every spring cleaning, it's like, oh. <laughs> It feels a little bit lighter, I feel a little bit more creative, I definitely feel inspired. It sort of like brings you back together to what really matters in your creative journey. And I know that not everybody is the same way. I know that there are some people who really thrive when there's a creative chaos. I'm kind of on the opposite end of that. I do like when things are a little bit more organized. But I've also heard from a lot of you saying that when your sewing space is in chaos and is disorganized, it's really hard for you to not only concentrate on sewing but most importantly it's really hard for you to enjoy sewing and the entire process so for those of you who do feel this way I hope that this series is going to bring you a little bit of inspiration but also maybe a little bit of a push to do this together with me and hopefully you can get back to enjoying sewing once again all right, so I have a couple of things here that, well, more than a couple, that clearly either don't belong or have to go into the trash or in a donation box or have to go into the place where they belong in my sewing space. So let me guide you through them so that way you can kind of hear my reasoning. So these are droppers. These are for my uh, paper marbling and my dye supply. These are watercolor pans, so they have to go into my art box. Then I did make my own shoes some time ago and I had some supplies left over like beeswax I might hold on to that some cotton thread I don't need it right now more needles um, I'll think about it because some of these big ones are really great for my little one to practice sewing so I might think about that pins I don't need because I don't currently use a lot of pins anyway and these are brand new I haven't I haven't touched them I have maybe once but other than that these are brand new I also have uh, two thimbles that this kit came with uh, one is in a good condition the other one broke so it goes in the trash 
Then I had a couple of these that are completely brand new. So these along with these needles can go into the donation box. I have some buttons over here and I do have a separate little box for buttons. I did buy these iron-on patches. I think I bought three little packets like that. They're all the same from Kroger a couple years ago. They were like a dollar each. I used some of them. I did share some of them with my friends. This has been on there for a while. Uh, I don't know, I don't see myself using it. Now, this zipper was part of a pack of zippers of different colors and different lengths. I bought it. I bought it because it was cheaper and I didn't really think through if all of the colors that were in a pack I'm going to be using and whatnot. I had it for multiple years. I don't sew with this color at all. This is not a separating zipper either. So therefore I know that this is clearly safe to let it go because I haven't used it and the time has proven to me that I'm probably not going to use it. Another zipper. All right, this is some sort of wire that I don't even remember which project I bought it for, but I do have a friend that does these kind of crafts. She loves to do jewelry and things like that, so I know she's going to use it. Ah, <laughs> I told you I have some of these already open, so yeah, I could probably use these up on like a shirt or a t-shirt, a little jacket for my daughter, but letting the other ones go was definitely a good choice, the right choice. All right, we're down to the last corner, and this corner is serger thread, and I'm definitely going to let go of some because I do have more than I need, and I've been letting go of some serger thread for years and years and years, and I'll explain why. First, let me just go and grab the ones that I have. All right, so as I promised, I have more. So all in total, I have three boxes of serger thread and I would like to pare it down so that way I only have two so I can free up the third one for whatever stuff that I need and then I don't have to buy any extra storage solutions. And I know that some of these I am not going to need. I won't be using for a long time, if at all. And before that, I had even, even more serger thread than this. Um, I didn't buy it. <laughs> it was actually a gift from my husband many many years ago way back when when we lived in Las Vegas so that was probably like seven maybe ten years ago and he gave me a huge box of assorted colors of all sorts of different serger threads and there was maybe like 50 spools maybe 60 maybe 70 I don't remember but it was like a huge box huge box all sorts of different colors no color was the same so it wasn't like four spools of this and four spools of that and uh, over the years, I came to realize that I actually don't use certain colors at all in my sewing, at all. Like for example, red, I just, I just don't use red in my sewing. Or if I really, really, really need to match the color and I really want my serger seam to be all in the same color, a lot of times I'll take a spool, I'll wind up the other spools with this color just enough for the seam, and that will do it. I paired these down I did free up this box and as you can see the majority of the thread that I'm using is either white, beige or navy and if I do need any other color I can figure it out it's not a problem for me and as you know I do sew quite a bit everything that my daughter wears everything that I wear about 95% of our clothes are handmade and I don't feel the need to keep this many colors on hand in fact I don't use them that's one of the reasons why I decided to let go even of more thread than in previous years so I know it might seem a little bit counterintuitive, but um, in my case, this is the right decision. All right, we're done with the pegboard. Let's move on to the bookshelf. First, just like with the pegboard, I'm going to start by taking everything off of the bookshelf and then sorting it through. So here I have sewing patterns and sewing magazines. And these sewing patterns actually came together with some of these sewing magazines that my mom sends to me from time to time from the UK. I enjoy looking through sewing magazine, just kind of keep keeping up to date with what is going on in the sewing world. And as you know, I, I live and breathe sewing, so this is definitely uh, right up my alley. Uh, but the reality is that I have actually dedicated a specific shelf upstairs to sewing magazines because I do keep them. <laughs> That's my weakness, that and books. But another reality is that I don't use commercial sewing patterns. As you might know, I draft my own. So these have been here, let's take a look. 
some of these magazines are like 2019 and even older so these have been probably been on a shelf for quite some time a couple years ago i did let go of a lot of sewing patterns that came together with sewing magazines and i think that right now it's time to let go of these as well I did mention that sewing books are my weakness and they are because I absolutely love them. I learned so much. They're just a wealth of information and I love new books, old books, vintage books, just anywhere where I can find something interesting, different, a little piece of wisdom or this or that. But regardless of that, there are a couple of books that I bought very early on into my sewing journey. And one is Stylish Party Dresses and the other one is So Many Dresses, So Little Time. These are in basically like new condition. Uh, as you know, currently for past couple of years, I don't really wear dresses. I don't really sew dresses or skirts. I'm sure sometime down the road, I will make like a skirt or a dress or whatever. But as of late, as of last couple of years, as I mentioned, I really don't. So these books, I haven't touched them even for inspiration. So I think that somebody else will benefit from them much more than them just sitting on a shelf gathering dust. Uh, these are in great condition. Perhaps my local library would love to have them because I think that, you know, teenage girls maybe will love them. And the patterns are all untouched, so they're all there. So they have to go into this box over here. Then my mom sent this book to me, which I really appreciated, just kind of seeing how, how the book is laid out. Anyway, I'm not going to go too deep into it, but this one is Fashion Hacks. Uh, basically, it's just upcycling, and um, I'm not a fan of the project. I haven't gone back to this book at all, so it needs to go as well. Ha! This is a sewing supply catalog, so this needs to go into the trash or be used for like a, a fire starter. And the rest of these books need to be sorted out back into the shelf. I also keep all of my sewing machine manuals and my serger manuals on the shelf as well because that way they're always there. You can reference them if you need like a you know refresher of the technique or something like that. You know, I always say that uh, the manuals are a wealth of information because they truly are. So if you do have a bookshelf in your sewing space or wherever you are or live, that definitely could be the place where to store your sewing machine manuals. <laughs> <laughs> I boxed myself in. All right, so now we're moving on to the fabric. And again, we're not organizing or I'm not organizing. I'm just going through the fabric and everything that I know for a fact that I'm not going to be using and will go into this box. And as you can tell, this one says paper crafting, but there's clearly fabric in it. So let's take a look. All right, this is the fabric that I used when I was doing farmer's markets. I haven't touched it ever since, and it's been like a year, maybe two, no, definitely two or three. So that goes, let's take a look. Oh, all right, this is the fabric that I bought. I don't hate it, uh, but it was my own fault because I didn't check the scale of the print, and I just, I just couldn't, I don't know, not in love. I tried to think about, well, maybe I will use it as a uh, lining for a knit jacket or something here or something there. I'm just, uh, I haven't used it since and I bought it um, last year, two years ago. It's a lovely rayon lycra, but, but it needs to go to somebody who will actually use it. Oh, this one is a neoprene. I think I got it at Joann's. Yep, it even says right over here, got it at Joann's. And I believe I got it way back when we used to live in Vegas. And you know what? I haven't used it since and we brought it here when we moved. And I'll say this, that for me, the criteria of passing on the fabric and you know making sure that it gets used with somebody else is that 
if I have fabric and I do think it's somewhat pretty. I do think it, you, you know, you could make something really stylish out of it. But the bottom line is, am I actually going to wear it? Because I've been in a situation where I feel so bad that I purchased this piece of fabric, you know, whether that was spontaneous or, you know, something else or just the, in the moment I felt like, oh, this could be a great idea. And I purchased the fabric and then years later, it still sits on a shelf and it keeps nagging me that, you know, you spent money on it, you spent money on it, you should make something out of it and then I do make something out of it and guess what I don't wear it so then it's wasted time wasted energy wasted money wasted everything so uh, now I much rather just acknowledge the fact that okay Yes, I did make a mistake, but I'm just not, you know, I'm not going to mis make that mistake twice. I'm not going to make something out of it that I'm not going to wear. So this definitely needs to go. All right, next. Let me just put this one aside. All right. All right, so this is polyester and I did like it back in the day. I believe, yeah, there was just a tiny bit of stretch. I think I got it at Walmart, but lately, especially where we live right now, it's so stuffy most of the year. We do get snow from time to time and we kind of do have four seasons, but I sweat. <laughs> uh, sorry for too much information, but I do, you know, you know, uh, we're people, right? So, uh, and I find that polyester, especially in this super hot and stuffy environment, I just, I, I can't, <laughs> I can't. It's one of those things that I'm not willing to settle for anymore. So that needs to go. You know what, this one I brought from, uh, from Las Vegas. And as much as I love it, it's like a burnout uh, lace. I mean, it's, be it's beautiful. It has that little shine to it. It's not my color at all. It washes me out. Uh, and I know that sometimes it doesn't really reflect on camera, but I had it for many, many years. Um, and uh, you know, at first I thought, well, maybe I'm just scared of cutting into it because you know, it's gorgeous fabric. Um, I don't remember how much I paid for it, but it's gorgeous fabric and wouldn't be nice to, you know, make something beautiful out of it. And then every time I had this fabric in mind, I would stand in front of the mirror, put this next to me and I was like, oh, there's just something isn't right about this color. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's polyester as well. So I think it's time. I'm not against all polyester, like I still have some double, double burst polyester over here. It's just uh, slowly but surely I've been phasing out some of it, um, at least especially those pieces that I know for sure that I'm not going to be using. Oh, this is my fabric dye basket. I have some silk over here and some fabric dyes and the droppers go here. Oh, I think here I also have some zippers. Let's take a look what I have. All right, so I actually managed to free this one up uh, because I have some other fabric sitting in this little cube shelf. I'm gonna pan you over there so that way you can see. I'm gonna grab this empty one and I'm going to load it up with fabric that I have on the shelves. So this is a great example of just knowing yourself, trusting yourself, and also trusting what you see, although it might feel a little bit counterintuitive of letting go of things because it feels like the more we have, the better it is. I know in my personal experience, I have to have just the right amount. If it's too much, then it just starts pushing and pressing on me. If it's too little, then you do find yourself kind of like going to the store and needing things uh, when you're just about to do something creative. So. Guess when I bought this fabric remnant? <laughs> Back in 2017. From what I remember, I bought two of these fabric remnants. Each one was just about a yard from Joanne's. And I did make myself a little top with a cap sleeve and a peplum top. And I ended up using just one of them. And guess what, since then, 
I haven't used it at all and it's been sitting for, right now it's 2024, right? So how many years? Seven years, seven years, seven years. That's it. <laughs> That's all I had to say there. This is my craft bucket. So here we also have to sort things out. Okay, this is a fabric medium. This needs to go back into the fabric die. These are alcohol inks. This is a sewing kit, just like a travel sewing kit that somebody gave to me a really long time ago and I haven't used it. <laughs> I haven't used it, so this needs to go. This is paper crafting, a glue gun, the best invention of the history of this world, a glue gun. All right, this thing needs to go there. Oh. Yes, we all know. Aha, this will go into the gift bag. And so will this. Okay, so I just realized that after taking everything out of it, so it's empty right now, that all of these craft items already sort of have other places where like would like items could live together. So I think I'm just gonna sort them out where they belong. And then bonus, I have an empty caddy that could be used for whatever else in this journey. All right, my box of Cricut stuff. And you know what, not much to pass on, but yes, a roll of transfer tape. I think that's it, yeah. Um, I got this roll of transfer tape with all of the other things in a Cricut machine itself when I was working with them two, three, three years ago, and uh, I love using Cricut, I really do. Um, and this is not sponsored. <laughs> but I did find out that uh, I don't really enjoy any projects with transfer tape. I don't really enjoy putting things on anything else but clothes, and I haven't really done that. So um, this is basically a brand new fresh roll of transfer tape, and I do have a friend who uses it a ton, so here it is. A brand new roll for her. On the right side of the table that you usually see on camera, right in front of the cubbies, I also have a clothing rack which I actually want to take down because I've noticed that oftentimes it becomes a catch-all space for either unfinished projects or clothes that are waiting to be upcycled. All right, I do wanna tackle some upcycling projects. These haven't been started yet, but I know that us as creative people, we often see so much potential in everything, but the reality is that I only have a limited amount of time, and also I'm not on a turn to make these upcycling projects, right? Because I actually wear them and wear them out. That's the whole point, in my opinion. So my husband recently sorted out his shirts, and he gave me these shirts and said, you know, whether we donate them or use them up for something else, uh, it's your choice. So I took all of them, of course, of course. Um, but now I'm looking at them and I'm realizing that, okay, the blue one, I wanna upcycle. The yellow one will be just super cute as a little dress for my daughter. This green one, it's in great condition. He is just not going to wear it anymore and I believe it's a tad too small for him. And guess what? Um, as much as I love green color, this is not like, I could possibly make it work, but I'm not in love with it. And I already have at least like five shirts to upcycle. So I think this could be great for somebody else. Uh, this purple one, yes, please. Um, this green and uh, blue and white one, this could also be done very cute as a dress for my little one. However, this one, I don't see myself using it and it is in good condition. I'm just checking for holes. Uh, it is in good condition. So this one and this one as well. Those are just not the colors that perhaps I would wear or my little one would want to wear. So I think these two we're going to pass on and you know, I know it might be sometimes difficult just kind of like passing on uh, potential really great projects and upcycles, but at the same time, I can only hold on to so many. And they do take time because you have to brain over it. You have to develop an idea. You have to make sure that it looks good. You have to make sure that it's wearable, it's comfortable. So I have left 
one, two, three, four, five, six. Six shirts to upcycle. I think that's plenty. Now the rest of the stuff that was on a clothing rack and those were the unfinished projects, I'm gonna put them in the box and we're going to tackle them in the upcoming episodes of the series. But for now, the clothing rack is ready to be pulled apart and put in a corner. And if needed, I can always take it out and reassemble again. Now I know that I haven't really shared this, but this is actually a very multifunctional space. So if I pan you out on the other side, you will see that there is a door. Behind that door, there is a water pump, a washing machine and a dryer. So this is partially a laundry room. And then this also acts as a guest room. Anytime we have relatives or friends over, this is where they sleep. And on the other side of the camera, you see two large lights. They're always on when I'm filming and an office desk. So that office desk I had it for a while and for the last few years it's sort of been acting like a storage solution for all of my sewing machines and I don't really have a chance to work at it. Plus having two desks in this area makes it really difficult to fit in a blow up mattress if we do have guests. So I've made a decision to sort of use this as an opportunity to take down the desk and instead bring in a smaller shelf, which is like twice as small as the desk that will still comfortably house all of the sewing machines, but will take a lot less space. Big kudos to my husband for helping me to take down the desk and then also installing a new shelf which we're going to show you in the upcoming episodes in this series. But so far, we've done a lot of work. And if you've been doing this with me, give yourself a good pat on the back because we've done the pegboard, we did the patterns in the books, fabric, which of course is the biggest part usually, then sewing notions, craft supplies, even some random stuff as like unfinished sewing projects and upcycling things. So it was a lot of work. And I know that sometimes it might seem like these decisions come so easily, but I truly hope that you've noticed that throughout this whole episode, the things that I've been letting go of, I had them for a while. And I know that I haven't reached for them, or if I do reach for them, there is a reason why I don't use them. And and I have realized that time is the biggest indicator for me that, you know what, you haven't used it in the past seven years, so you're probably not going to use it in the next seven years as well. So instead of this particular thing sitting there collecting dust, maybe it's worth giving it a chance with somebody else so that way these supplies can actually live on and be used because that's what supplies are made for. And I know that not everybody is the same way, I totally understand, we're all very, very different friend but I truly hope that this is a little bit of a push maybe that light at the end of the tunnel if you've been struggling with the amount of stuff that you have in your sewing space. Now to finalize this first episode of the series I really wanted to give you three tips that really helped me out in this whole process year after year and the first one is to try to not to beat yourself up and the reason why I say try not to beat yourself up is because I still do not as much as I used to in the years before, but I still do. And the point is that it's very, very painful to realize that you have spent the money on a thing that you no longer love or you no longer want to use. And the way that I used to think about it is that, well, I bought this fabric years ago, I spent the money, I should definitely try to incorporate that into my sewing somehow. And as I mentioned before, I ended up making a garment and not wearing it because I don't even love the fabric anymore. My lifestyle has changed, my needs have changed, but I do, I used to make things out of the fabric that I no longer love because it nags at me, you know, you spend the money on it, it beats me up, right? And I've realized that it's not the way to go about it. The damage, so to speak, has already been done. You already spend the money on it. It's been already sitting on the shelf in your sewing space for who knows how long. So you really have to realize that, you know what, I can't change the past, but I can decide what am I going to do with that in the future? Am I going to allow it to nag at me and to beat me up more and more and more? Or am I willing to give this supply or this fabric a new life with somebody else who will actually appreciate it and use it? 
Point number two is that I totally understand that sometimes it is quite difficult to estimate if you're going to use this or that supply. And I know that I've been talking a lot throughout this episode about not loving this particular fabric or not loving this particular color of zipper, and those are no-brainers. I know that I don't love them, I know that I'm not going to sew with them, and I know that I have not used them by now, so off they go. But there are some supplies, especially if you're very much into like creative sewing or creative crafting, that you might not necessarily love love, but you might need them in the future. So in this case, next to your donation box, I would probably make a little maybe box of some random supplies that you might need in the next year because you might get some time to get your hands on that one particular project that I've been really thinking of, but it's kind of been on the back burner. So that way you still have the supplies, you don't have to go and rebuy them, uh, but they're sort of like out of sight so that way they don't clutter your sewing space, especially if that sewing space is quite tight. And the third point is just about being honest with yourself and really discovering and answering the question of why do you sew? That big why. Why is it important to you? And what do you sew that you actually wear? Not your imaginary self, but your actual self, day-to-day -day life. What is that you wear the most? And once you have that very crystal clear, it becomes so much easier to go through your stuff and actually understand what are the supplies that you know you're going to use and what are the supplies that were bought for, for whatever else, but no longer aligned with that inner vision with that inner why. Now I've also realized that after doing this year after year, it also sort of curbs your shopping. So if you want to know how to spend less but actually sew more, here's the perfect video for you. And thank you so, so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to be organizing. And until next time, happy, thoughtful sewing. I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.